Hello, and thanks for watching this video. I'm going to jump straight into it with this one, but like and subscribe if you feel like it. Before I start doing the actual math and stuff, I should say, though, I'm going to do a sort of like top-down approach first, explaining the delta V formula, and then I'm going to go bottom up from the fundamental laws of physics all the way back up to the delta V formula. Before I can do that, though, I got to start out defining some terms and variables that are going to be used in this video, though. Starting with delta V, which is going to be written like that. Two symbols, but one variable. Don't get confused by that. Same thing here. Exhaust velocity. That is the velocity of the exhaust coming out of the rocket nozzle. We just have like a hypothetical, a hypothetical rocket here. <laughs> and then the dry mass of our hypothetical rocket, which is just M dry. And that's all of the... um mass of the rocket without fuel. Here we have the wet mass, which is the mass of all the fuel when it, the rocket is totally full. And so those are the four variables we're going to use in the actual equation right now. But we're going to get more involved as I go on with this video, but I'll explain them as we move on. You'll see. So here I'm writing out the delta V equation. Delta V is equal to the exhaust velocity times the natural logarithm of the wet mass divided by the dry mass plus 1. Now, you might not know what the natural logarithm is, but that's just a mathematical operation. It's sort of something you might learn in um, Algebra 1 if you're in the United States, particularly New York, I guess. The curriculum's different with each state. But, uh... Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's pretty nice. That's one of the reasons why I like it, actually. And it's very, very helpful. But now, I'm going to start the bottom-up approach, talking about Isaac Newton's second law of motion, F equals M times A. So, F, or force, is equal to mass times acceleration. So, essentially, we are applying a force to some object that has some mass m, and it is accelerating at some acceleration a. That's what we have there, essentially. But, um, in our situation, we're dealing with rockets, so the force we want to think about is thrust. Now, thrust can be expressed in this same exact formula, and we can think of the mass as being the mass of the rocket, and or... A being the acceleration of the rocket. But what we also have to realize is that thrust comes from the molecules that are be being pushed out of the rocket engine. So we can also think about it in those terms. So somehow we got to get an equation out of the idea that thrust is from molecules being pushed out of the rocket and accelerating some amount. So it seems like a hard task, but we'll make... We'll make do with it. So what we're going to end up doing is thinking about mass as a certain amount of exhaust coming out of the rocket nozzle over a specific interval of time, which I'm going to call delta T, not delta V, delta T. And delta T is just some generic interval of time. It's not like a specific number or anything. It's going to be written like that, a triangle with a T. It'll... It'll disappear soon, so don't worry about it that much. Anyway, though, with that definition, we can think of mass as being equal to m divided by delta t times delta t. Now, that might seem redundant because, obviously, we can multiply the delta t on the right there in the fraction on the left, and then the delta t's will cross out, and it's like you'll just get m equals m. But when we pull them back together, when we put M back in with this new definition, with this new A that I'm writing here, then we'll see where we get the results from. So A can be thought of as the exhaust velocity divided by that same exact interval of time, delta T. That works too. So we can rewrite this equation that we have here, F equals M times A, as M divided by change of T times the exhaust velocity and what ends up happening is the delta t that's being multiplied on the left 
gets divided out, so to speak, by the delta T on the right. That's dividing the exhaust velocity on the um, bottom right equation there. And what we can do is rewrite that m divided by delta T as the mass flow rate, or m dot. It's just the m with the dot on top of it. And that is essentially just how much fuel is being burned up each second. It's a pretty simple um, idea. But that's just a new variable. That one's going to stick around, so it's important to get the idea with that one. But what this allows us to do is to rewrite thrust as just T equals F equals the exhaust velocity times the mass flow rate. And the reason why this is a more useful form than the other form is because we can actually calculate the mass flow rate and the exhaust velocity. Or at least we can measure both of them theoretically in a lab. Those are both components of a rocket engine we could actually determine. It's much more manageable. And then I should also say, um, for you guys who know calculus and everything, this approach that I just took here actually kind of smooths over some things. It makes a few approximations that aren't actually totally correct. If you do it with calculus and you do it correctly, 100%, you end up getting the same result, however. But what we're going to have to do now is calculate the acceleration of the rocket using Newton's second law of motion. And that's actually quite easy. It's just A equals F divided by M. And in this case, F is just thrust, so we'll be able to easily rewrite that. And then actually using some calculus, we're going to be able to calculate the velocity at every moment in time. And then we'll see that the delta V, or no, yeah, delta V is actually equal to a change in velocity, particularly from the moment that the rocket starts burning to the moment it runs out of fuel. So a rocket with 500 delta V can change its velocity 500 meters a second, essentially. Anyway, though, what we can actually do is get velocity from acceleration using calculus. The problem is we need to have all of the non-constant terms that we're defining A by in terms of T, in terms of time. So we need to actually define mass there because mass changes with time. And then we can do an indefinite integral to calculate the velocity. But that indefinite integral is with respect to time, not with respect to mass. And that's because acceleration is the time derivative of velocity, but I don't want to get into it. That's a whole other thing. And then there, just that equation for mass is pretty simple. If you think about it, the dry mass plus the wet mass is the initial velocity, and then we subtract the amount of mass that has been burned out of the engine, essentially. So that's how we got that. But here, what I'm writing on the bottom left, that is our new equation to calculate velocity. Now, I should have actually written a plus c next to the velocity, but I forgot to. <laughs> but we resolve that later. I just forgot to do it in this particular line. But it's fine. And so, what we can do next is actually kind of quite simple, if you take calculus or have taken calculus and remember it. Thrust is constant with respect to time. It doesn't change without, it doesn't change throughout time. So we can just write that as a factor outside of the integral after we're done substituting in that equation on the top left in for a but we'll get to that in a moment. So, <clears throat> that's just what we're doing here. T times the indefinite integral of the reciprocal of the mass of the rocket with respect to time equals the velocity plus a constant C. But anyway, when we resolve that integral, this is what we get. Minus T times the natural logarithm of the mass of the rocket divided by the mass flow rate of the rocket, plus c. Here we were remembered to write the plus c. That's an important part. Without the plus c, we would have done the wrong calculation, but it worked out in the end when we wrote it in there, when we remembered. 
So here, the next part that we have to do is um, put everything in terms of t, because the delta v is a change in velocity. Wait, did I say the delta v is a change in velocity over an interval of time, specifically time. So we have to get velocity in terms of time, not in terms of mass or anything else. So here, I just write in. <clears throat> mass but in terms of time that equation that we have on the top there that's all i substitute in there and then we're also going to have to calculate c and then it's pretty smooth sailing from then on out here is just me writing out the rest of the equation once you solve for c to solve for c i just did a simple trick a very common thing to do where you just say all right what is the velocity when the time is zero and once you do that, you make all of the factors on the equation constants. And c is just a constant, so then you can solve for c. <clears throat> and those two terms on the right there are c. So the exhaust velocity times the natural logarithm of the dry mass plus the wet mass plus the initial velocity of the rocket. And so we're almost at a point where we can calculate the delta v. What we do here to kind of um, put the last step in our journey is to <clears throat> subtract the velocity at the time that our rocket is out of fuel, which is the wet mass divided by the mass flow rate. We subtract that velocity from the initial velocity. And then that's what the delta V equation is. All that's left to do from then on out is to just simplify, and then you're good to go. If you're wondering where I got the wet mass divided by the mass flow rate as the time that the rocket is out of fuel, that comes from the fact that the wet mass is how much fuel we have, essentially, from the beginning, and then the mass flow rate is how fast we are spending that fuel. So it's kind of like a distance speed and then you're trying to calculate the time is kind of that same deal where if you want to know how long it's going to take you to get say you're running like five miles an hour and you want to know how long it takes to go 50 miles then you just divide 50 miles by five miles an hour it's the same principle there but anyway though that pretty much wraps it up there i just simplified the equation down so thanks for watching and see you next time